In this video, we are going to start a totally new chapter about uh, templates with Dancer. Uh, the first thing is going we're going to see the, the template Tiny. This is the built-in template that comes with Dancer, uh, so we won't need to install anything else. Uh, but you don't, know, we won't be able to do have the full power of template tool, toolkit. But it's a good good start. Okay, so what we have here is uh, basically this directory structure. We have the app PSG file. Uh, the test should be next to it, in our case at least, uh, and we don't have a test uh, for, for this uh, example for now. Uh, and then in, next to the, the file, there is a subdirectory called views, and inside there is a file name called main tt. Uh, that's the template. And basically, the, the, the fact that we are using the views directory is just because that's the default, but you could actually set uh, you, if you go back to the, the chapter about uh, configuration, then you saw that probably saw how you can uh, set the, the, the directory for, for where the templates are coming from. But this is the, the default directory. And um, the uh, tool toolkit, the te sorry, the templating system is called Dancer to Template Tiny, which is uh, based on the template tiny um, uh, templating system. So you can, so you can click on it and, and, and visit the, the page. What we have here in the application is that uh, we call um, we just have a single page. Okay, it doesn't uh, not uh, everything interesting. Uh, but actually, before we before that, so why would you want to uh, use a, a template anyway? Uh, the basic idea is that uh, up till now uh, we had uh, the HTML that we returned to the user embedded in the code, and that's not really a good idea. It's very the 90s uh, way of, of programming or early 2000. Uh, it's much better to have the, all the HTML in a separate file because it's better to have different languages in different files. Uh, it's also better to, so uh, Perl in one, HTML in another one, CSS in a third, uh, JavaScript in another file and so on. There, uh, and then it's also good because uh, you can then hand over the HTML for to someone who uh, understands HTML much better, and then they can work on the HTML file, the template files, uh, and uh, you can work on the per Perl file. Uh, so you can separate uh, these uh, uh, concerns. Okay, and that's uh, that's usually a good thing. So what we have here is just an example of how to fill the template. So we call just return. We call the template uh, keyword of the function of dancer two then give the name of the template you can see you don't need to uh, you don't need to and you shouldn't give the name views here because that's the directory name just you, you just give the name of the template and then you give uh, the data structure that is sent over uh, basically you give a, a hash a, def a reference to a hash with the, all the key value pairs all the data that you send over to the template uh, and then so this is just some random data basically now let me run the, the application here on the command line. So here, here we are. If I just run LL, you can see that the I've used directory is here. If I run tree, then you get you see the same directory stru structure that you saw uh, on the on the HTML file. If I run pluck up and then visit the page, then you will see that uh, we have just this text. So the first of all is going to be uh, we're, going, we're going to go over how it uh, was created, basically. So, um, going back to the uh, data, what we have here is we have a key called name with just a string, with just a value. Then another key with a value which is sort of like a boolean, okay? So in this case, it, I just set to zero uh, be, to be false. Uh, then we have a, a another key called languages with an array, a reference to an array as the value. We have another key with a hash, reference to a hash uh, as the value. And then inside we have key value pairs. And then just to have fun, we have another key that's an array with little hashes in there. So this is an array of hashes. And we'll see how to extract the, this data in the template. So in the template, which is in the next slide, uh, we have this hello world. So this is just the hello world. It's just hard coded text, nothing in, in there. Uh, then we have this is how this is how you access a field in the template. So you, you have the square brackets uh, with the percentage side, and inside you have just the name from the from this uh, hash. So uh, in this case, name, okay, uh, which is this field, 
and then the value Pearl Dancer will be filled. And this is what we have here, Pearl Dancer. Okay, so this uh, is just an H2 tag, so like slightly lower, uh, smaller title. Then uh, you can see the other construct that uh, the templating system provides. Uh, it's an if else uh, construct. It always looks like this if, uh, then there is an optional else, so the else is not required here, and you have to finish it with the else, end. Okay, so the if always ends with the word end. And then if this on field uh, is true, then this part is going to be shown, else this part is going to be shown. So now it will say it is off because the on value was zero. And it says it is off. Okay, so this is what, what happens. If you edit the main program, so I encourage you to download these files and, and uh, play with this, so you probably you change it to one, then you will see that the result changes, the result here uh, changes to on. Okay, then the languages. The languages is an array. So the, in the languages, I actually show two things. Uh, let's go first uh, to the actual array part. So this is the for each loop. It just it's just like a for loop in, in Perl or for each loop in Perl, uh, but it looks a little bit more like uh, what you see in Python actually. So it's a uh, for each sort of the mix of the two. Okay, because you use the for each keyword, but also the in operator. So for each, then you have a variable name, okay? This is a variable of the templating, template uh, thing language. And then here you have a, an object that you can iterate over. So that's an array in this case. Uh, so this will go over, iterate over the elements of this array. And then here, this too is also closed with an end. And inside, for each iteration, we use, again, this uh, square bracket percentage with just the name of the field and now this variable can be used as the field. So this is how we printed out the list items here, the three list, list items. And uh, the whole thing is wrapped with the UL, so that's just the HTML part, okay? It's wrapped in the UR, so it's an unordered list and these are going to be list items. But this is how you just go over, iterate over elements of array. Now, in, in addition, in this case, I, I also wrap the whole thing in an if block. So this if and this end uh, are, goes to, go together. Uh, so this whole section is going to be displayed only if the languages uh, field exists and has some value. And uh, this is, uh, I use it often if there is some data that might not be there at all, okay? And if there is, if the data is there, for example, let's say we, you, you remember the to-do list. So the first time when you just start it, you don't want to have an empty sort of uh, unordered list, or you don't want to have the title and then no data underneath. So it's probably better to wrap the whole thing into an if block and show the title only uh, if there is anything to show, and then show the title and all the items that you, that you wanted to show, okay? So that's the array. Now the, the hash. So the hash, this is how you access the hash. If you go back for a second, what we had here is a hash where, so the main key was, was just Perl, and then inside there was a reference to a hash, and then there were uh, keys, creator and release. And these, were, these are the ones that we use here. So we just use the dot operator. This is how uh, the, template, uh, the templating language works. So you, through the dot operator, we can access sub keys of, um, of um, um, hash. And uh, don't ask me what happens if the, if the field is, uh, has, a, has a space in it. Maybe you can put quotes around it. Just, I don't know, okay? Uh, maybe you can put, put quotes around it, or maybe it's not supported, I don't know, okay? So this is how you access fields from a hash. And then the last one is when you have an array, okay, an array of little hashes. So first of all, we have a for each loop, okay, and in this case, I didn't have the, didn't put in uh, it, it, the if statement. So this this will, if someone re removes this uh, this fruits from the from the code, main code, then it, you will see this fruit and then the table and another table, so the opening and the closing part of the table and then nothing in between. So it won't be even I think correct uh, HTML wise, uh, not a good idea. But that's how it, I, it, it turned out. 
So we have a loop here, a for each loop, again going through the elements of this fruits array. And then inside we can use the fruit, which is now an element of the array, which we know, okay, because we saw the code. Uh, that's how we send it over. We saw that this is actually a hash or reference to a hash. It doesn't really matter for, for, for our purposes, but it's a reference to a hash. And then through that, with the dot operator, we can access the various fields of that hash. So it had a name and a color. Okay, sorry for the English people with no U there. Okay, so here we have name and color. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, that's it. And, and also this too. So that's just a for each loop. So it has an end. And I think these are uh, all the constructs that uh, this uh, tiny uh, templating system uh, provides. It's definitely good to, to get started, but later on we will go on to uh, move over to template toolkit, which is a much more, much more powerful uh, templating system, but it needs to in installation. So um, that's it uh, for this video.